So guys, I have the pleasure to be the host tonight. I'm Christian. I'm a principal with the global VC firm eVentures. We are around since 1998 and invest in early stage startups, anything between 250,000 euro to 20 million euro in consumer internet and software companies. And it is my pleasure to have the chance to introduce from scratch today to you guys. It's meant to be a masterclass, which is hosted by um, McKinsey Digital and Startup Notes to share insights from leading entrepreneurs and investors in the Berlin, but also European ecosystem. And we are glad that we have a chance to kick it off tonight. Um, it will be 12 sessions in total over this year. And uh, we are looking forward to even host many more exciting guests. Um, the whole from scratch idea was initiated by Startup Notes, um, Emil, Nacho and his team who actually have an exciting podcast. I can only invite you guys to subscribe on SoundCloud and listen to what they've done over the last years already since they have actually made to interview a lot of the leading people from our ecosystem here in Europe. And uh, today, um, I'm, I'm really excited to, to have a chance to kick it off uh, with a close friend and a great entrepreneur, uh, Chris Gerber, who is uh, one of the co-founders of Lieferando. The company got started in 2009 and is probably one of the most prominent examples of a Berlin company being successful enough to make it to a billion dollar valuation and actually um, IPOing. Chris will also um, touch upon his experiences as an entrepreneur and will talk about his current role as a CEO of Talon One, his um, next company. I'm really excited to have you here tonight with me. Hello. So, Chris, um, let's start by kicking off and tell us a little bit about your very own definition of entrepreneurship. Um, I find it, that, I mean, in general, in Berlin, the term entrepreneur, or I would say in the whole world, entrepreneur is a bit mystified. Um, I actually see an, entrep <coughs> an entrepreneur as someone who does something without very little control from someone above. And people tend to kind of over-exaggerate the importance of the term entrepreneur because everybody who does something on his own, with his own way of ha having a sort of independence, um, sort of responsibility, a bit of financial planning, that is an entrepreneur for me. Not just the guy sitting in in Berlin, Mitte, Prenzlauer Berg, or Kreuzberg, in factory, thinking about crazy ideas. So, it, see, dr drill it down a bit. Okay, so last year you've been on a podcast with Startup Notes saying that if you start a company to become rich, it's usually not necessarily the best way of starting into entrepreneurship. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit on that? I do think people, and I think you, we talked about that earlier, people do think it's like, what do you want to do later in life? And they're like, yeah, I want to be a founder slash entrepreneur. But what does it mean? Um, it seems to be more a lifestyle decision. And you read about all these big guys in the news who actually made money. But if you drill down a bit, um, there's very little people who make money. And people, I think, underestimate how little influence they actually have upon their own success. And... I would say with Lieferando, we were super lucky. We started Lieferando without doing any market research. We had no idea about our biggest competitors until we've been on the market for you know, six months. Um, not knowing was a big advantage, but banking, for example, investment banking is a very easy way, comparably easy way to get rich. You put a lot of hours in, you become an associate analyst, associate VP, whatever. You make 250, you make 300. A friend of mine is in JP Morgan, he's 34. He makes 600,000 euros a year. Um, two years, three years down the road, he's gonna make a million. That's very easy, very predictable if you don't fuck it up. Um, entrepreneurship, I see a lot of people very high, highly qualified who start going into their 40s. Successful business nowhere near. And they keep having this vision of, oh, I'm gonna be rich sometime. Chances are you not. So if becoming wealthy is not the major reason why somebody should go into entrepreneurship, what is it then? Like, What are good reasons why you would start a company? So my good reason was I have a problem with um, being told what to do. I was really bad in high school. I nearly fa I basically failed high school. Um, my university degree, I got a call from my 
professor saying, hey, I'm going to let you pass through your bachelor's degree, but your bachelor's thesis is the worst I've ever seen in my whole career. And I'm only going only to let you pass if you don't pursue a career in academics because that would be treason to the academic society. And I said, okay, that's fair enough. Um, Steve Rando was in the first year. You should think you know everything better, even though obviously it's not true, but you should have this you call cockiness, arrogance to really think you know how to do it better. So in the, in, in the case for new entrepreneurs, do you think it is a good trait, a good character attribute if you're a little bit cocky and pushy in this? I wouldn't call it, maybe cocky is the wrong word. You should be focused on your thing, like what you want to do. You should, I mean, I was listening to good friends where I say, okay, I can learn from these guys, but you should be focused on your thing, say, oh, I really want to do that. And I, I think there are two people of entrepreneurs you see in Berlin what I call like rocketpreneurs. So following a business because it makes mechanically sense. It makes sense from a market study perspective, from the research you did, and you're very analytical, and this is the way I should go. I don't think this will give you enough energy to go through what I call valley of tears. That's maybe a German, English translation, Tal der Tränen. And there will be a lot, so there will be a lot of, time, probably 90% of the times things won't go as you planned. And if you just follow something because you have a mechanic and think this should work, um, then things don't work and you, you can't put the energy in. And then there are people who just kind of follow what they want to do. A good example is I am. They just had this idea and at one point they started understanding how to commercialize the product. On the extreme example, you have Move24. Um, where the C or the managing directors being in the business didn't have, like had a very small share of the business. And I actually like the ones who have a bit of a stupid idea and just follow it through. I like them a lot more than... Um, speaking of some of the entrepreneurs also that you have just mentioned, so these guys made a lot of money um, and young people see them as their idols and role models. Are entrepreneurs becoming the new rock stars? Do you feel like that this is happening with all this Forbes 30 under 30 and movers and shakers, Ernst and Young, entrepreneur of the year? How do you see that? No, I, I see that happening. Do I think it's, it needs to happen? I'm not sure. Rather, I would say no. It's a, again a bit of a blowing things out of proportion. Um, It's rather these people should be focusing on being helpful. But again, I find there was so much luck involved and very, a bit of talent, but also a bit of luck and star signs and, I don't know, cosmic things had to happen before we were successful. And I find people who stand up and say, look how, what a cool guy I am and how great I am, do seem to forget what, who was actually involved, what, has to, what had to happen. Um, I mean, our IPO at four o'clock in the morning, um, you have to, in an IPO at seven o'clock, you have to release some papers so the IPO can go through. At four o'clock in the morning, so three hours before the IPO, that wasn't clear. Um, so at three hours before it was happening, I was like, fuck, I'm not, never going to get any money out of that. So a lot of things that happen and people who try to mystify their, their rock star image seem to forget it. Do you think that Older people from corporates or investment banks or consulting companies who, have, who are above this peak of age could also still, be, still become successful entrepreneurs? Would they have an easy way in? I think everybody can become an entrepreneur. I mean, it's, maybe it's harder for them in a digital space where they're not what you call digital native. Um, but entrepreneurship is not limited. Entrepreneurship can be Uh, you start a bike repair shop and work with refugees and try to make it self-financed, self-sufficient. That's an entrepreneur for me. So one strength of McKinsey, though, is that they are publishing some of the best reports. Um, in March 2018, they've actually published an article where they say that the idea usually is not the problem, but the execution. What do you do yourself in order to, to make it happen? Keep going? Keep going. I would say that's... Probably the singles, singles easiest advice, um, keep going. The problem is with keep going, you, 
if you wander off the cliff and you keep going, it's actually quite bad, but nobody can tell you when it's happening because I've told myself keep going and maybe I'm already over the cliff and I don't know. So that's a bit of a dangerous situation, but at least just from my Lieferando experience, telling one is too young to actually prove something, we've been told this is never going to work. Nobody's going to order over the internet. You know, do you think like, how can they say that? Uh, 2008, 2009, Eventure said that to us. Great VC, by the way. <laughs> um, why did we pass? Nobody's going to order over the... There's, I, why shouldn't I order my, to my, from my pizza guy over the phone? Um, Anti-portfolio is always a very dark story of the VC um, business. So we've, we, we kept going. And I think that for me, entrepreneurship is you live from a very short moments of success. And that can be today we got another delivery hero country which um, committed to use us. So that's a great, but that, that's a great success. But that has to carry you for the next two weeks of fuck ups. Not even fuck ups, but things being slow and not being the way you want them to be. Um, and it's really, for me, it's not more than, it's not more, it's a lot to like go home every day and say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to close that contract. Tomorrow I'm going to close that contract. Tomorrow I'm going to close it. And actually still believe in that. And even if you don't believe in that, you have to keep going because you know, statistically it has to happen at some point. Okay, so let's move on to talk a little bit about some of the things that uh, you have basically um, done yourself, tools and, and, and things that you have discovered for yourself that help. In your first interview with Startup Notes last year, you said, don't let the business take over who you are. Allow yourself to take breaks. Have a balanced life. How do you find that balance? In terms of timing, we at Liferano, we always took a month off in January for kitesurfing. Every, since day one, every January we're gone. Not everyone, but Kai and me took, a, took, a, um, took four weeks off. Jörg also took a lot of holidays off. I probably my total holidays each year at Lieferando was probably eight to 10 weeks. Not at once, but over distributed time. Long weekends, maybe a week here, because you're always on. It's not like you, I'm kite surfing and then I'm having my laptop out. Uh, probably work three, four hours a day. And even if I'm not working, mm. there are very few moments where I don't think about the business in some sort of capacity. Um, so I do think take holidays, take a break. It's actually, I find you come back from, back to the office in a, in a much different person, as a much different person. If you think you want to work, then go somewhere else and work, I don't know, off Barcelona. Go, go to a friend's office, say if you can just have a desk there, work from there. Just see other things. But also, what I'll do now at home, I mostly leave my laptop in my car. So I know if something important happens, I just go down, grab my laptop and can work at home. But when I'm at home, I try not to have my laptop with me. So this has not really changed? No, I think, it's, what I think we realized as a team, you have to, if, if, if you're weak sometimes and you don't want to work and you're like overexhausted, the other ones cover, or you have to find a balance. And I find I worked much better in 40 hours, 45 hours, 50 hours a week and do all sorts of other things while or instead of working 60, 70 hours and do nothing. And then the question is likelihood of your business becoming a failure is 99%, probably 95. And then you wasted all these 80 hours a week for nothing and your whole life has been gone. Like you're 30, you're in your mid 30s and what have you done? Nothing. You haven't had a dog, don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> Haven't seen your nephew, niece, haven't had parties, haven't been traveling, just because of this vision of like a startup. So I think rather work less, enjoy your life, and then good things will follow, then that's my take. Cool. So we are actually at a point where we would open up for the Q&A on, on, on Slido. Um, so as you can turn around, I think, shall we just go from the top? If you don't have a good idea yet, what is the right way to build your entrepreneurial muscles? Um, I would say start, just work in a startup or go out, go traveling, uh, do something. I would say being just a normal, working in a normal agency or, let's sorry, consulting, investment banking is probably not the right place. 
do something where things break, where things don't work, an area which you enjoy. I don't know if you, if you like old cars, then work in an old, old car repair shop, work at a, make an internship or help out in a, I don't know, do whatever, go in an area that you're interested in and I think good, I'm a big believer in good things will follow and things will turn up where you see, oh, this is something which I might solve and if it doesn't work out, you make the next thing. You say the success of a startup is mostly based on luck. What can people still take from your experience if they most probably cannot reproduce it? So luck is a big part of it, not mostly. Um, you should take holidays, take weekends off, be focused and don't make your startup your whole life. So you actually have fallbacks and then things will follow and it also gives you good outside perspective. And just keep going, just keep going. Ask yourself the whole time, how far should I go? But always keep a bit going. Like, and have the true, like you have to believe that after two weeks or four weeks or two months or three months of constant failure, that there will be this one email which says, yes, we're going to sign the contract. And for that one sentence, you have to look out for. And that's, that has to keep you afloat. And you have to have that belief that this one sentence is going to come. Chris. Thank you very much for, for the first session here at From Scratch. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you. I, this whole session will be made available um, as a podcast and video summary on Startup Notes, uh, YouTube channel, iTunes, Overcast, and SoundCloud. And it is the first out of 12 sessions. Um, next time we will be hosting uh, one of the Heilemann brothers actually speaking about the secret behind building great companies and um, starting um, with great ideas. And the next session after that one will be with uh, my valued colleague, Uwe Horstmann on deconstructing the trails of great founding teams. So we're looking forward to seeing you again. I think Chris and me, we will be around for uh, a couple of minutes still. Um, I hope you had some fun. Uh, also hi to the live stream. Um, goodbye to the live stream. Um, and uh, thank you again for, to the Startup Notes team and to McKinsey Digital to actually giving us a chance to talk in here a little bit. Um, have a nice evening. Thank you.